So you know how society has loads of stories around how people figure out what they want to do, right? From pursuing a passion to following a family tradition. Well, I was curious about how UCL grads figured out what they want to do. So I spoke to them, lots of them, and I've included three of those conversations in this video. I first spoke to Tanya, a 2019 graduate who now works in infrastructure finance at Lloyds Bank. I asked her how she figured out what she wanted to do. So when I was in sixth form, like I mentioned, I did know what I wanted to do. And I looked at the career options that were around me and I thought if I if I'm taking geography and I don't know what, what I want to go into, maybe it's worth already securing some work so I knew what I wanted to do after university. So when it came to sixth form, I had already applied to university. And I looked around for different, I guess, social mobility companies or scholarship that would offer me internships or any type of just work experience. Um, and I came across the Lloyd Scholarship Programme and they offered two internships, um, mentoring, volunteering, everything. And it was just a, a great opportunity. I went through the assessment process, interviewed everything, and luckily I managed to get a place on that. Really deep thing that. I guess banking would be for me, but I thought, hey, let's try it. It is a type of work experience. Um, and for me, I always knew that I would never go into science. I didn't take anything science-y. I knew I would never go into law. There are so many compelling parts to Tanya's story, and I really like the commitment to trying things out and noticing what an employer could offer as a whole. So from scholarship offerings to volunteer opportunity and that feeling almost more important to Tanya than what specific sector she might be interested in. This openness to trying new things is also mirrored in what Keesum shares next. Graduating in 2019 with a degree in biomedical sciences, Keesum's gone on to co-found a startup looking to reduce food waste after winning an illustrious international prize for entrepreneurship. This is what he shared when I asked him how he figured out what he wanted to do. I stumbled upon quite accidentally. Um, in the sense that I was studying uh, a degree in biomedical sciences. My career prospects in first year and pretty much uh, the first bit of second year was, okay, let me get good grades so that I can uh, and some maybe internship experience so that I can take this and apply to a for a consulting job uh, at the uh, big three, big four firms. But then because I sort of knew that uh, studying the biomedical sciences wasn't necessarily for me from quite early on, I wanted to essentially leverage uh, my university life to the best of my abilities for the goal that I wanted to get to, which was consulting which was how I stumbled upon this uh, thing called the Health Prize, which is um, a social enterprise competition. In the initial stages, it's essentially like a small case competition, right? You pitch a business idea, a social enterprise idea uh, in front of a panel of judges. And then if you progress, then you get to uh, more advanced rounds. But um, if you don't, then that's excellent material for your CV. We, I guess, kept on progressing through the rounds and uh, at the end um, got a bit of funding which enabled uh, this sort of um, entrepreneurship path of mine to get kickstarted. I really like this from Keesum. Knowing that he wasn't interested in a scientific career, he looked to pivot towards consultancy and building up experiences that might help him get there. But in doing so, finding that he found something else more attractive and in his case, entrepreneurship. And this reminds me of a particular careers theory, planned happenstance. And this is the idea of flexibility in finding opportunities in somewhat unplanned ways. And it also brings to mind a quote by the economist John Maynard Keynes. When the facts change, I change my mind. And there are definite positives to not being too fixed in your career thinking mindset and noticing if the wind starts blowing in a different direction. Next, I spoke to Tom, who secured his PhD in engineering and chemistry in 2014. Tom spoke about a more systematic approach when I asked him how he figured out what he wanted to do. I sort of had it from a really young age that I wanted to be a scientist. So that I would have been about 10 or 12 uh, when I made that decision. It was just something that kind of 
I went with through all the stages, so GCSE, A-level, obviously degree, master's, PhD. Um, I never really knew, though, what actually it meant to be a scientist, kind of on the day-to-day -day basis. So I took a postdoc, and the idea behind the postdoc was, okay, this is as close as it will be to be a scientist. And during the, the postdoc, it became very, very clear to me I don't want to be an academic scientist. I was just looking at the job and I was just kind of noting what is it today that I really enjoyed about today. And it was just became very clear from doing that. I really loved solving problems. So then it was a case of, okay, what jobs can I do where that's what I do for a living? I solve problems. Um, so I started looking around and I settled on moving into technology. Like if you go the other way around and you look at jobs, then you're not necessarily sure of, is this going to fit? And then it's more like trial and error. Whereas when I went this way around, it was very clear, okay, well, this job is definitely going to be what I want to do. So Tom describes pursuing self-knowledge first, in his case, a love for solving problems, and then finding careers that correlated with that. It's interesting, right? In some ways, the accounts of Tanya, Tom and Keeson as to how they figured out what they wanted to do are quite different. But in other ways, they're quite similar especially in the respect of trying things out. Now, watching this in January 2021, it might feel like these opportunities of trying things out aren't available to you, but I would gently disagree. There are many different ways to trying something out remotely, gaining virtual work experience, or by speaking to people who do lots of different roles and seeing what you're excited by. I want to extend my gratitude to Tom, Keeson and Tanya for giving their time and their insights. Now, coming up, I have a Q&A episode coming out, and if you'd like your careers questions, any careers question, to feature in that video, please email me at careers.marketing at ucl.ac.uk. I absolutely love receiving those. And that's it from me for this week. I'll see you next time.